Hey everybody, Norm from Tesla here and I have a quick and simple uh, electronics and lighting project to share with you today. So this past summer, I went to the annual Wonderfest model making convention, one of my favorite shows of the year in Louisville, Kentucky. Saw a lot of familiar faces, a lot of amazing model makers and their builds that they brought. But one person I also met was Andy of Scale Electronics. And while many people bring their models, Andy brings the lighting systems and the control systems for the lighting systems that fit into those models. I had a chance to chat with him and see his inner light lighting system work in a scale model of the Enterprise D. It looked amazing, the animations looked great, uh, and we followed up with Andy after the show to get a sample of his inner light lighting system. So it comes in a bunch of different form factors. There's a light, a light plus version and a pro version. And what I have today here is the light plus version. This is the inner light light plus lighting system, fairly compact. It's a 3D printed chassis with a control board on the inside, some status LEDs behind it, and a bunch of different connectors. It's powered over um, micro USB, so this is uh, driving five volts of power for five volt LED systems. So this can be run off of a USB battery pack, you can plug it into a wall ward, or you can plug it into a computer or USB port, um, which will also drive this. Uh, there are a bunch of these connector, different connectors. This is actually an audio out. Uh, there are four input triggers that you can attach to switches or buttons that just need to be shorted to activate. Uh, and then the main control output is this lead here, these three wires, because this connects to your standard three connector programmable LED, ground power and control. So I have a simple LED strip here, um, and these are RGB, and I will connect them to the system oh, reversed there it goes and it should light up the first one letting you know it's working so the way this works is uh, the control board here actually generates its own Wi-Fi signal so you can connect it with your phone and uh, with a uh, corresponding application so I have the inner light app here and it's a very simple UI so you can create up to 10 different effects that you can program and each effect here on the light plus can control up to 40 different LEDs. And so the LEDs are basically in series, that's position one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, all the way to 40. And you can then, for example, uh, run one of these pre-installed effects, and that would be your warp effect. You see kind of have a gradual glow, get real bright, and then imagine this inside a nacelle. And there it goes, that's a warp effect. Here's, for example, a photon torpedo effect on position one. Gradually gets brighter and then flashes. Very cool. And we'll demonstrate what it means to program some of these with the application. So I've uh, created a preset and you have then icons representing all of the 40 LEDs that you can control. I would just tap the ones I want to control. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, and now I have all 10 of these lit up. You can, of course, select just the ones you want in your designs. Here's every other one. And then you can then say, well, I want these LEDs to flash a certain color at this interval with this amount of delay, or you can have them fade between up to five different colors at different powers. You can control you know, the gradient, how bright they are, a duration of these effects, whether they're activated by a trigger or not, or whether they even run at startup. So with that amount of combinations, you can have, imagine, one of these connected to a bunch of different uh, miniatures and spaceships and all running their own uh, animations connected to one power source and one control source. Pretty cool, right? Uh, well, today we're gonna implement these in a small model kit build because we have, and we've had this in the office for a long time, a replica of a Star Trek original series computer. Um, this is actually, I believe, the 4A beta 
variant of the original series computer. Fans have identified all the different versions and all the variations of original series computers that appeared on the set. The 4A Beta, I believe, is unique because it has these toggle switches on the left side. It's 7 by 321 of these lights plus 4 on the bottom and also uniquely has these random text strings also in this position. It first appeared in the Galileo 7 episode of original series. Uh, this is just a static prop, no lights. It's hollow on the inside. We actually don't even need technically RGB LEDs because these lenses, these gems here are already tinted, but we're gonna try it as well. So I have just a simple LED strip. Uh, these are all spaced out pretty evenly where they can be easily affixed to the back of these. Uh, I'm gonna get all 25 of these attached to the back, perfect, underneath our 40 LED limit, um, and then attach the input triggers to the switches. And best part, fans have not only identified what model of computer this is, but also have mapped out the animation sequences. And so I've been able to print out the, here we go, seven frames of animation that make up the, uh, the animation of the uh, TOS 4A beta computer. So I'm going to program that in using the Interlight app um, and hopefully get a accurately, screen accurate, flashing original series Star Trek computer. Should be fun. Let's get started. So here's where we're at. I've wired up the LEDs to this Star Trek computer prop, and I think it looks pretty good. Um, so we're gonna turn off our studio lights real quick. All right. And then I also have the switches set up. So here's our Star Trek prop. And if I turn this on, bam, it turns on and off. So I just have it as flashing bright white. This is a test of maximum brightness. Pretty good. That looks good to me. Uh, and then now we're gonna start programming the animation. Uh, we're gonna open up the app associated with the inner light system and go frame by frame. There's only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven frames. Should be pretty simple. Okay, so the way I wired it up, I have basically one continuous strand of 40 uh, programmable LEDs. I'm not gonna be using all 40 of those, uh, but the first step is gonna be um, associating which of these lights correspond with which LED in that series to map out to the animation. So we're gonna open the app and go one by one, light up the uh, each light and then map that out so we can get our first frame set up. I want to start a new effect. I'm gonna call this effect number six. All right, effect six. So one is, nope, it starts at two. So the first light that lights up is two. And then that's three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. And 17 we skip, and then we have 18. Yep, and 35, there we go. All right, with room to spare. As I'm programming the animation, uh, I'm getting a better sense of how the app works. And right now, uh, if with this light version, I have 10 different effects. And I got to, have to think of each of these effects as 
uh, well, the effects can be a flash, they can be a strobe, they can be a fade, uh, but they can't be any more complex than that. Um, I can add variables like a delay time or how long to hold the flash, how long to have a light turn off, but I really have to think of each of these effects as almost an uh, individual, individual, individual frame of a sequence. And so if I open my first frame, I have, for example, these specific lights turned on. Okay, so I, I know my first frame is these lights. Uh, they will be triggered by a switch, and then I will hold them for one second, uh, and then have them off. So flash just one time. That's my first frame of this animation. If I open the second frame, so it's the next effect, I have the other lights that light up. And now I want this to be activated by the same trigger, so I have the same input trigger, the same switch, uh, but I'm going to have an effect delay. So I'm going to wait till lights that flash on the first frame finish, that one second, have then these second array of lights turn on, uh, and then hold them for, according to uh, the experts, 2.83 seconds, uh, and then turn them off, So and so on. So I'm going to do that for all seven frames, and hopefully when we flip the switch, we will get a perfectly timed sequence. Okay, so I've programmed the animation here. We're going to do our first test. I've also programmed a second switch to basically reset. So this second switch illuminates everything. Great. And then let's see if we can get this animation going. Here we go. That's pretty good. Oh, there it goes, that last frame. And we set it right there. Let's try again. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is seven frames. I think that's it. Those are seven frames. Okay, so that was a fun trial and test of the Scale Electronics Inner Light System on this prop replica. And I'm getting a much better sense of its capabilities, its limitations, and the use cases that this system might be ideal for. If I want to have a system where these aren't tinted, I want to control all different types of colors on up to 40 lights uh, and just have them blinking in certain sequences, seems pretty ideal. Um, what I did realize though is each frame of those, uh, each frame of the animation, so each effect that I'm creating uh, needs to be a fixed color. So thank goodness these were pre-tinted, but if I wanted to have one effect control the 40 different LEDs and have them all be different colors, I don't think that's possible in the inner light light version. Um, although the pro version, uh, definitely more possible and more potential there. And you can also program that using web browser as opposed to using a mobile application. I wanna leave you with one more thing because I think this is, this last thing, is maybe a game changer, and I didn't have, a can't, get, didn't have a chance to try it in today's video. But okay, so you have the inner light controller. This is that the pro controller. I have the four inputs, uh, the audio out, and I have it just attached to just some surface mount LEDs, right? So a simple animation. If you want to have these lights light up a small spot, you would normally maybe use fiber optics, and you can absolutely use fiber optics with this system. So Andy also has an adapter that he sells. I've never seen this before. This adapter perfectly fits on top of a surface mount LED. And then he has a fiber optic channel coming out of it so that that is then lit. And that is a programmable fiber optic light now, right there coming off of 
one surface mount LED. A lot of potential here, but that's also a lot of space. Well, Andy also sells on his site this. Now this looks like one surface mount LED, but it's not. And if I connect it to our chain here, sure we got power and voltage, great right here. You can see as the list lights up, this is not one single light. This is actually eight individual programmable RGB LEDs right there on this very, very small package. And so that's cool, but you normally wouldn't have uh, something you'd be lighting eight different lights um, in that small of a space. So again, bring fiber optics into play. There's this 3D printed adapter that perfectly sits on top of this package. It registers on, so there's no light bleed. There it goes. And now at the end of it, you have eight different programmable fiber optic channels, all out of this package. You can have five of these connected and 40 different fiber optic channels to light up like the interior of a spaceship cockpit and have your blinky lights in a very, very compact package. This connected to essentially this and this and powered over USB. That is super cool. So this might be a future project where we incorporate some fiber optics. We never had this doing our Starfield ship build, um, but now that we know this exists, we probably still skinned it, we know its name, and we can tap into its power. That is super neat. Tiny programmable fiber optic lights with controllable LED. Thank you so much, uh, Andy, for sharing with us his Scale Electronics Inner Light System. Thank you out there for watching. I'd love to know what your solutions are for lighting up your own model kits at home. If you have a controller that you favor, I'd love to hear, and please post them in the comments below. Um, we'll be doing more uh, projects with this system in the future. But until then, I will see you next time. Bye. Thank you so much for watching that video. If while watching any of my videos you like, any of the t-shirts that you see me wearing, well, you can go buy them. And there's two places you can get them. First, you can go to tested-store.com, a web address that my crew laughs is one of the hardest things for me to remember in my whole brain. But now they've given me a second URL. You can now go to adamsavage.com and buy any of the t-shirts you see me wearing on this channel. And there's a whole bunch of other stuff there too. Thanks.